everybody. We've got a special episode for you today. We have our Odyssey Swim Run Austin race report for 2021. So let's get ready. We have the rock flute all polished up. Let's just get right into it. Hello, Tide Boys, a Swan Run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is episode 97. In this episode, we are sharing our race report for our last race of the year, closing out our Swan Run season for 2021, Odyssey Swim Run, Austin. It was great. It was. Show over. It was good. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap. So- yeah, I mean, this, this race was awesome. We really enjoyed it going back there. I think... Um, we we're talking about this on the plane. That this is really the first time that we've really been able to compare apples to apples because the course wasn't that different from from last year. Mm-hmm. So it was really. I mean, we've obviously been working out a lot and training and spending a lot of time thinking and <laughs> working on swim consuming run stuff. swim run um, materials, dispensing it and consuming it. And yeah, it was it was kind of cool to actually be able to do some comparisons, which we'll get to that later in the show. But yeah, it was fun. Yeah, so last you left us was we was our Orcas race report, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that could have went better, I think, for us as a team if we feel. And then about a week after that, we got news that Attila Catalina was um, moved or postponed back mm-hmm. t- to March 2022. So that made Austin our last race of the year. Yeah. Initially it was going to be just like a tune up, just like, let's go have some fun. We love that course. It's such a great course for beginners and people that are just want to sort of dip their toe in a swim run, but without, Mm -hmm. you know, taking on some of these harder courses. Um, yeah. So we, you know, our plan was to just go there, have fun. And I don't really think that changed too much. We still had fun. Yeah. Except that I think going into it, we're like, all right, well, you know, we have this apples to apples comparison opportunity. We feel fit. We put in a good training plot going in our run was pretty dialed in, mm-hmm. still been doing a bunch of swimming. So let's just kind of see what happens. Yeah. So let's get into the race report similar to how we have broken it down before. Yeah. So getting to Texas, we flew there. We flew there in an airplane. <laughs> That's how we got there. On an aeroplane. But we took it a little bit. Uh, I think if you listened to last year's race report, which Chris and I did to kind of prep, for our <laughs> prep for this race as well, mm-hmm. like figure out, oh, what, where do we make mistakes? Where could we improve? Things like that. Um, I think last year's trip was a whirlwind, in and out, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, kind of situation. This one, we took an extra night for ourselves. We had uh, the Concho boys mm-hmm. who raced with us um, in uh, the Orcas race. They also joined us in Texas. So we all rallied together th- Friday night and... Uh, had an extra night at Camp High Camp Le- Tex Lake. Highlands, Highlands Camp. Camp Tex Lake. At yeah. Tex Lake? I don't know. <laughs> it's some combination of those words, but that's where we it's were staying. It's a place that has a cool ropes course. Yes, and a really cool looking, yeah, like zip line situation going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got an email Friday night from Lars telling us that they were going to have some breakfast at. Uh, Camp Tex Lake, which is where the race was starting and ending, and that you know Mark and Lois Fanonga were going to be there cooking up breakfast. So we we're like, yeah, we'll we'll be there. So it was actually pretty cool to go down there uh, with the Concho boys and just sort of mingle and, and get to really chat with Mark and Lois. It was really great getting to know them and um, you know Lars's parents. Yeah, Lars's parents. Right. And the yeah, voice of Swim Run. The voice of Swim Run. Mark Fanonga. And the guy. chef of Swim Run. The chef was so yeah. Fun. yeah. Lois. Yeah, we also learned a bunch of trivia about Lars, like <laughs> how he got his name and stuff. It was it was crazy. If anyone wants to know that, just DM us. But uh but yeah, it was it was a great start to the day on Saturday, which we hosted another shakeout swim run. Yeah, we were just so like overwhelmed with how awesome though it went at, at the Orcas one with the swim run labs and the adorkables with the Fika after. Mm-hmm. But the adorkles and the swimming labs weren't here, so it was just on the low tide boys yeah. to facilitate such uh, such an event, which, you know, I think we did a pretty good job yeah. for being a low tide boys uh, I mean, I, I, exclusive I think production. We're, we're pretty good about setting our own expectations super, super low, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> they were exceeded. But yeah, you know, we put it out there, and 
honestly, we were there on Saturday. We were going to do the cliff jump anyway, just to mess around and have some fun and mm-hmm. check out that part of the course again. So we were like, hey, why don't we just put this out for people? And yeah, we had 35 plus people show up. That was It was awesome. I mean, there was great uh, comments and everything on the Facebook thread as well. Lars had some extra Odyssey, old Odyssey bibs. So we divvied those up. So we were all kind of wearing the same look. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we went for, a, a you know, maybe a 45 even, minute yeah. little 30 it wasn't to 45 even three minute miles. Swim run. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was good. And I think we, you heard this on the run for tacos with Sterling and Lolo, uh, as well as the Orcas um, episode as well, is that a lot, we have been seeing a lot of first timers come out here and mm-hmm. it's a great way. And we picked a cliff jump with a kind of a tricky little exit. So people were familiarized with the kind of the most difficult or the most challenging or the most intimidating parts of the course. And we hopefully made that a, a less stressful. <laughs> experience yeah, well, exactly. The, exactly. Yeah. So we started the cliff jump, which is sort of the beginning of swim five and we ran back uh, you know, reverse the course essentially to swim four, mm-hmm. kind of jumped in a little bit early so people could practice the exit of swim four, which is the most difficult exit, most technical, slippery. Kind there's of a rock lot climbing. Of, yeah. Actually. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, what, what Lars Fernando would say requires a lot of teamwork. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we did that and then just kind of ran back to the cliff jump and just played around there. I jumped twice. I think you jumped twice I had as well. A couple jumps as well. It was super fun. It was nice. I think people really appreciated just getting a sense of what that was going to be like if they were going to do it on race day. Yeah, and it was it was a cool thing. Like there was also kids there. There was mm-hmm. a couple, you know, just playing eight, eight yeah. to twelve year old kids. They had wetsuits. They were doing cliff jumps. Everyone. It was very fun. Everyone was there. Like, oh, this is a fun thing to do. And people watching, hanging out in totally. the water, shouting encouragement. It was just a cool way to spend. Uh, spend the afternoon totally and you know it's the same thing that happened at orcas i feel like the shakeout i could have done like eight more hours of that it was just so much fun just like hanging out doing some swim running doing some chatting helping someone set up their pool buoy doing some more (laughs) swim running it was just very it was very fun yeah you know as we you know get a million pool buoy questions and stuff but it's still great i still enjoy answering those every every time they come through um, I feel like we needed to start bringing re lasso supplies to redo your, yeah. your rig. Yeah, we should have. Yeah, we were definitely making some some. So coming soon, low tide boys <laughs> pull buoy uh, mount servicing. Yeah, unreserved uh, comments as to <laughs> uh, we don't think that's going to work for you, buddy. Um, yeah, so so we also had some fika. It didn't live up to Team Adorkable's no, high standard. Yeah, it wasn't that, but we did have some beignets. Yeah. Some croissant. Chipper waited in line for about like 30 minutes to get this stuff. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? We need to celebrate the Swedish sport of swim run. Some French pastry. <laughs> yeah. As usual, we try to capture everyone that we interacted with at this weekend in Austin, Texas. We can't guarantee and that we got everybody, but we tried our damnedest. Yeah, we even had uh, we even had the Contra boys trying to help we us. We had them working for us. Yeah, because you know we we really appreciate just everyone coming up to us and introducing themselves, and you know, and telling us that you know they listen to our show. And then after the race, I, I appreciate, I definitely appreciate it after the race. We're like, we listened to the show and it totally worked, and we we're like, oh, oh thank God, sure, yeah. Oh, like, <laughs> I sweet. took your advice and I did horrible. Yeah, that's, that's what we, that's, that was, that's that's what what we always about. expect. <laughs> that's what we always expect. But when people are like, oh, it was helpful. We had a great race. Even like the overall female winners are like, we listen to the shows. Again. Anyway, it was great. So in no particular order, <laughs> definitely not in chronological order. <laughs> no, or numerical for that matter. <laughs> There's literally no, no order. order. <laughs> uh, staying, we have a couple people who were staying in the, in the uh, high uh, text camp compound with us. Yeah, there whatever was 20, it was called. 20 rooms or something there. Uh, some with scorpions and some without. Uh, but Jeff Emanuel from Boston. Yeah, Orla from Colorado. Sarah, of course, fellow Nevada. Yeah, Nevada yeah, Emma Nevada. Hollis. Marie and Katie, Team Twisted Sister, and we did, in fact, verify that they are not going to take it anymore. They, they definitely weren't taking it anymore. Scott uh, Surmeyer, who interacted with him on the Strava Club, so it was great to meet him in person. And I think I might have seen Scott running near the end, and I... I might have yelled a different name at you. So sorry about that, Scott. Yeah. But I was I thought it was you. And if anyway. Nicole and Bree. Yana, who's the 
you know, just happens to be the Iron Man AG world champion. In BD. No big yeah, deal. No big deal. On that. AG is age group as well. Yeah. Why we're dispelling, we're busting, <laughs> busting abbreviations up. Uh, Andrea? Eric Braun, also in our Strava Club. And a funny little uh, coinkadink here. Our rental car was from Missouri. Yeah. I thought that uh, Nissan Altima from Missouri is what I was calling our car. And then just two doors down from us uh, was Joe from Missouri. Yeah. He did the solo Meg. long course with his wife, with his uh, wife Meg. First swim run. He's another one who we were sort of dispelling, you know, just. We had a little knowledge session. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff came over and uh, Joe came over and then we had the Concho boys there and some more people and yeah. we were showing off all of our different pool buoys and we were comparing the arc we had the whole lineup from the arc keel s all the way to the plus we had people flicking the lights because they wanted us to shut up <laughs> yeah they were like oh we're trying to sleep there's a race tomorrow yeah very important race and we were like it's 8 30 <laughs> uh and we're on california time so it's 6 30 blake and diane from connecticut adrian and jolene so they were the second place short course mixed team so yeah. congrats to you two uh larry dubois and his brother and Lisa Decker, the only swim runner from Kansas. Yes, and Lisa. And this is so great to see Lisa finally. Yeah, finally. like she's been a big supporter of the show from back in the day. And in her car, she did have a Super Stoked on Swim Run sticker. I couldn't believe it. We parked and we got out and I looked over and there is a sticker that I, that we made. Yeah. Sitting on someone's car on their window. Yep. I don't. That was. It's still a, a, an interesting thing for me to process every time something like that happens. Definitely, definitely. Alyssa, who um, we we spoke to afterwards, who's going to make a guest appearance on a future Gear Talk show. She won the long course uh, team division. Yeah, on female. her first swim run. Way to it's be, amazing. Alyssa. Way Good to job. be. And Sydney, Josh Arden, who got solo long course second place. We happened to meet at a vegan food truck. Garden, garden thing. Food truck garden yes. thing. With, I mean, I will say those milkshakes might have been the culinary treat of the weekend. Were they even vegan? Because they're so they good. They were very good. And then we didn't see Lindsay in person, but she did slide right into our DM, said she saw us at some point, but she was hu hustling to a flight to catch. Uh, but she has confirmed she tested positive for catching the swim run bug. Yeah. So that's great. Mission accomplished for us. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Lindsay, for saying hi. Now on to Should race morning. About, yeah, let's talk about race day. So it was super cold and foggy in the morning. I yes. mean, on, on Saturday morning, it was pretty cold and foggy and actually kind of spooky when we looked outside. It yeah, it was. And I think we kind of adjusted a little bit of our race morning strategy a little bit we had talked about it that we were still going to opt for the vig wetsuits for all you gear uh people here this is your this is your tune in right now we, yeah. we're still going to go with the vig and or drink and or drink <laughs> um and so because the water temperature was still in the upper 60s low 70s so me and you were prepared to suffer for the first yeah run two and maybe run three coming out of the water yeah. like okay it could be in the 40s but we knew near the end of the race or maybe for that longer cutting back across pace definitely park, gonna warm up it was gonna warm up i mean if saturday was it. any indication by 11 o'clock it was pretty toasty when we were doing our shakeout and i exactly. think i think w the way we we thought about it is like yeah run one will be fine it's really coming out of swim run uh, of swim one into run two, uh, into yeah. run two where it's like all right now your hands are cold now you're all wet now you got to deal with with cold air um, yes. So, so yeah, it turns out that we weren't the only people thinking that. In fact, Odyssey ended up delaying the race initially to, I think they delayed 30 it. 30 minutes to 30 7.30. Minutes, and then they delayed it to 7.45. The we, long course only. Long course only, yeah. Short course started on time, which actually we, 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 we can talk about that later, but I actually think having them start very close was was pretty cool. Um, we, we got two warm-up runs in. We were like, yeah, we're going to be super pro about this, do like a shakeout run get warmed up before the race start. And as we started our first one, we heard over the loudspeaker that the start has been delayed. So we uh, we just went back inside. I heard that from the voice of Swim Run. From Yeah, yeah, from the voice of Swim Run. Um, yeah, and then we heard they were going to push it back to, to, to 7.45 as a start time. And, and we heard it was, some of it had to do with fog, but also they're waiting for some park rangers to open some gates so they could get the aid station set up, which 
hey, you know what? That's a super important part of this. People have important. to have aid. So I'm glad that they uh, that that they did that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was pretty stoked. I, I don't think I was as nervous as I was for orcas, where yeah. I was just like, all right, we, you know, we've done all this training. Like, here's an opportunity to kind orcas of orcas like, felt really uh, pent up. Yeah, like a lot of the energy and the nervousness was like building, and we were like popped. Yeah, sort of. yeah, and it was I different. Guess. It was different than Casco, where Casco was just like, "Hey, big day coming, and we've yeah. been training all year for this." Let's and see Orcas how it goes. was like, "This isn't easy." <laughs> yeah, this one was more like, "Hey, we've done this before. We feel pretty fit. We definitely don't want to repeat the mistakes that we made at Orcas." Speaking for myself, I thought that I, I made it a point to myself that I wanted to be more communicative and just check in more and just like not just assume that you can read my thoughts. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, should we just do a leg-by-leg -leg breakdown on, on the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, let's do it. Start out leg one on that run. We knew we had a longer two-ish miles run, and, mm -hmm. and we knew, as with every race, people are going to shoot off the front like a bat out of hell just because that's what, you know, and Texas, people got the cowboy blood in, and they're just yeehawing right out, <laughs> right out of the gate like a bull. And so I, I t we tasked Chris with, with keeping, it, uh, keeping it under a certain uh, time, yes. a certain pace. And I, I think we did a great job. I didn't yeah. feel an immediate really spike in the heart rate. I mean, we were, we were, going, we were going at a good clip. Yeah, I mean, but it I wasn't quote, like I quote, this is Chipper's quote. It's like, if you go under seven minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trip you. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that we were that we were gonna make well, it. Well, hey, well, here's what we did. Those first two miles was essentially like seven ten, seven fifteen pace. So just perfect. Yeah. So perfect. I was definitely dialing that in. Yeah, I felt good. I feel like a theme you're gonna hear throughout this whole recap is like we were racing, but we were never sort of redlining necessarily. Like we just kind of kept it and we we're moving quickly, but yes. we were not trying to you know not trying to break blow, any land speed anybody, records or anything anybody up. Yeah. yeah that first run was cool definitely warmed us up i think I, I ran with a swim cap i don't know if you did i did put it on a few minutes before um, the race it did spread up really quickly and we found ourselves like even before we got into swim run in, in, <laughs> swim, swim one one one, one. And numero uno once we got like by the time we got to that swim it was already pretty separated. Like we didn't have a lot of people around us. It was lonely for us. I mean, there was there was a front pack, which was a two, you know, D one swimmers that were doing solo yeah. course, Adrian and Josh. Josh. And there was a, a mix uh, a men's team, Justin, I'm forgetting his partner's name. Eggplant um, emoji was their team name. Eggplant emoji, yeah. Who were, you know, young, super fit, really fast. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were like, Hey, it's probably a good thing they're taking off and we're not trying we'll to leave keep it up to with the them. Youth to leave it to the youth stuff. for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like that first run actually really set the pace for the whole day. I think it was good because I, it could have, it could have turned out much worse if you would have shot out, if we wouldn't have talked about it and communicated about everything and you would have shot out or we would have got caught up and we're doing six thirties. Then we get into a situation kind of like what happened at Orcas is that we're spiking higher and quicker than we thought and, and kind of stuff. But yeah, you played it very well, very it wasn't conservative, but we just played it to yeah, the plan. I would say it was up tempo, but it wasn't like yeah. I mean, it was like it was we we we, yeah. were, we weren't trying to catch up or keep up with anybody. We were yeah, just trying we, to do. We our agreed thing. before we even started. We said we're gonna let them go because we're mm -hmm. not racing these people. We are racing the low tide boys of 2020. Right. Is <laughs> exactly. We exactly. Again, yeah. This is a, a apples to apples comparison, and we knew Adrian Cameron, who's a friend of ours, he ended up winning the long course solo. He practices there, yeah. So he goes he knows, out and he knows every he step to take, and, and we were, yeah, we were trying, we were trying to to keep up with him, and um, and so swim one, I took that one, and remembering from the course previews and, and the race last year, all the swims are very negotiable. They're right up against the mm -hmm. the coastline, if you will, or the cliffs or whatever, and you just keep the tightest line you can. And that was pretty much my goal for every swim was put good good pace out. And, and keep it as tight as you can. Now, there was a couple times, there's a lot of, uh, not a lot. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. that in Swim too, because that's when I thought like the underwater chupacabra was going to get yeah. me. But yeah, Swim Run was fun. So, so, why do I keep saying that? <laughs> swim Let's one, just move to Swim 2 and we'll be a problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. Swim 1 was fine. Um, it, you know, I think the distances, we weren't, ex we weren't thinking, oh, they're long or short. We were just kind of thinking they're just going to be what they are this time. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, that's one was fine. The water is actually very nice. <laughs> yeah, it was actually a little warming uh, to go in there. From, it was, from there the was cold lots air. of steam coming off, and mm-hmm. I got in first. I was kind of, I was, I was, ra- oh, I was ready right. to go, and oh, I'm like, yeah. I get in, and mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, okay, Chris, are you ready? Let me know when you're ready. And it's he's like, like I'm ready. ready, and I dive in, and I start going, and I feel my like my crotch like sink down, and I'm like, shit, my buoy's, <laughs> he's like, my yeah. buoy's mounted on the back <laughs> still, and Chris is like, let me know when you're ready. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I deserve that. I deserve yeah, that. Yeah, that was you. You're like, oh, oh, pull buoy. Like, whoop, whoop. Like, oh, yeah, I'm a pull just, buoy just on. Let me know when I was ready, probably buddy. five strokes out already. You know? <laughs> um, but that ended up actually being one of our fastest uh, swims of the day, I think. Um, yeah, it was. It was also a good. I always feel like once we get the first swim out of the way, it's kind of like, all right, now we're officially swim running. Now, yeah, now we're we're wet um, and we're ready to go. And and yeah, run two. It's pretty short, 1.28 miles or whatever. Uh, straightforward, a little bit of bushwhacking, just following the flags. Um, and that, the best we could. Yeah, and that and that went by uh, where we were staying and the ropes course and stuff, which is mm-hmm. cool to see. And then that got into swim two, which was sort of our first longish swim of the day. Yeah, we, we went around a little cove there right into um, run three. But in swim two, there was a part, again, Chipper mentioned he was taking these really aggressive shoreline. So so, sometimes we were dodging underwater trees and stuff. Yeah, so that was a thing. Yeah, they had all these branches or trees that had been there. And I'd be swimming and I would look up and I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, there's a bout. So I felt like I was kind of like a a a Florida gator, like what Sterling from the the Run for Tacos swam in with. But kind of navigating these these uh, sticks and branches sticking out. So there was one part. Did I catch where, you with anything? Oh, I think you you hit it a little close, and I got into this. I don't even know what it was. It was like a fell. It was like a felled pine tree or something. That all these like I thought it was seaweed. <laughs> I don't think there's seaweed in, in the rivers. Colorado River. I don't think um, so either. But but yeah. So so it kind of like the tether got kind of swept up into it, and it was pulling me it down. It was pulling it down. It was pulling me down, and I was going, and I'm like. There's something on the tether, and you're like, yeah, and, I, and I'm just trying to power through, and, and at some point you just stop because you're like, what's going on? And I'm finally, like, so I just sit up and I'm just pulling all sorts yeah. of, you know, stuff off. And that, and that was really the only time we ever had to stop in a swim. I think, yeah, and that, actually, so the ridiculous. pace on that one was was not too not too shabby, um, but that brings us right up and over to heading across Pacebin Park run uh, for about a four hundred, uh, sorry, a two and a half mile run. Yep there um, which this had a little bit uh, of a course change to it so i think the course overall maybe was like half a mile to maybe a mile longer on the running and this is a part i think where they may have added a half mile or so or something like that yeah um so we had um it marked on our paddles that you know yes the posted distance is this but we know it's going to be long mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Aaron uh, and the Odyssey team kind of shared out the new map yeah they sh- it was so like we, a google map so yeah. we just compared them kind of side by side to kind of see what was going on that run was fine i think at that point is when i started sort of leading runs essentially yes. Um, and yeah, I felt like we we're moving really, really well. We we're communicating well. I kept checking in as like, oh, how does this pace feel? Um, we made sure we ate at the aid station sort of at the beginning of that run. And our, our aid station strategy was just drink and take nutrition, even yeah. whole gel, half gel, okay. whatever. Um, I will say for this year, there were a lot of kind of little bonus aid stations where there would just be like a water cooler and a little bucket of gels and stuff. Yeah. And just, there was can. no one watching it but it was there which i thought was cool because yeah it, if it did get hot or you were in a bad way i mean that would save your ass and for some odyssey volunteer to just go and drop that and then pick it up yeah six for the hours most part, later right like off the nowhere. roads yeah, yeah it was it, I, th- I thought that was really that was, great just to good. you know you can never have too many opportunities for people to get hydration and nutrition or they feel like they need it especially because you're not necessarily carrying it on board um that run i thought was really great we're moving well um, and that led into sort of the second super long swim of the day, which was almost 1,200 yards, mm-hmm. um, where you kind of get into the steep end of a boat ramp. And I s- led that swim. I think I did about half of it yeah. before sort of turning it over to you to bring us in. Um, and I will say for the swims, 
I mean, you did most of the most of the swim work. Yeah, I this one. is that we didn't really talk about how we were going to di- divvy that up per se. Yeah, but I, th- I guess we have accepted our unspoken roles as head chief of running and I'm chief <laughs> of swimming. I guess. Yeah, and it was it was like, well, let's see how everyone feels. I definitely felt like I could have led more swims if needed, but if but if you're feeling if you're feeling good, you're a stronger swimmer. So it's like, why why am I? Yeah, I had I. Yeah, it's like if I had the pace to to do it, I should be doing it. Um, and yeah, uh, so that one that one was good. Yeah, that was definitely one of the one of the longer ones. Um, yeah, it really there. isn't too much to report because none of the swims are really. I mean, this one was cool because you're basically facing limestone cliffs on your left hand side of those little caves and stuff. And yeah, um, so it's it's picturesque, but in terms of level of difficulty, it's just in terms of distance, nothing else. Yeah, so this is where run four, we came out into run four here on this one, and this is where we knew we were going to have, oh, I think somewhere, it must have been on run three, at that aid station, the the guy that was running it, he was like, you guys are in, you're, good, you're, in, the sec, you're in second place. Yeah. That's that was, what he said to us. Yeah, that was at the beginning of run three, and I was at like, the aid station. I was like, I, I, you know, I pretty much just kind of ignored that because yeah. I didn't know what that meant. And we, yeah, we don't, well, one, we don't really know how to race in the front of races. It's not something that we are normally accustomed to. And two, it's like, it didn't matter if we were in last or whatever. It, we weren't letting that affect yeah, our Yeah, we our were race. just trying to keep, keep it within ourselves, like up tempo for sure, but not like, <laughs> not thinking it's like, oh, we got to make up like a 10 minute gap or yeah, I mean, close a no gap or anything like that. We I mean, all, that. all we knew is that, there really weren't anybody around us. Like once we finished like swim three, I mean, we're kind of running by ourselves. We were by ourselves the pretty whole much. Time. And the only, we, I mean, we knew we were somewhere near the front because we saw the only first group ahead of us. No one was passing. No us. one was passing us that we saw. Um, so yeah, coming out on run four, that was one area. I, I know I felt you were pressing a little bit harder on the run, which was totally fine. And we knew that on this little out and back section, we had an opportunity to get a gauge for if we were, for where what we place were. we were yeah. in or what was happening there. And we saw Adrian and Josh right. charging so, through. So we knew when, yeah. So, so I think the plan was, is like, well, let's just at least get to this out and back so we can kind of get some and sense we'll of what's going on. And we'll reassess from there. And we were feeling good. And, you know, at that point, like, I didn't feel like we were even really laboring I mean, we're taking nutrition and we're working hard, but, you know, was it zone three? Maybe. Was it zone four? Definitely not. Was it maybe zone 2.8? Most likely. I feel like we were zone three. I think that was like all of our runs were mostly at tempo, it felt like, from what we were doing in practice. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so, so we got to that turnaround and we saw Adrian and Josh mm-hmm. and then we saw Justin and I'm forgetting his part, you know, yeah. whatever team at plan emoji. And we we're like, okay. And we saw the woman who was leading the, the long course women. She, she looked super strong, yeah, really tall. She was charging after those guys. Yeah. She was, she was, she was racing I for sure. I would want her chasing me down. That's um, strange. yeah. So we saw them on the out and back and, you know, we just kind of started doing some like mental math. And we sort of figured that they were about six minutes ahead of us. Yeah, at least. And at that point, we we're like, yeah, we think we're pretty much in second place because we didn't see anyone else. And mm-hmm. it, was, it wasn't until we did our turnaround that we started seeing other teams going down. It was a couple mixed teams. Um, a couple solo. Yeah, exactly. So we're like, all right, I think we're in second place. And it seems like we've pretty much have consolidated that already because we're just, you know, not racing with anyone. Um, but I think we, we, we kept sort of the effort. Yeah, the foot, was, the foot was on the gas for sure. And I think we were, we had, I think once we sort of decided that six minutes was too much or whatever time it was, we had sort of decided like this is too much of a gap for us to close, to try to close in, yeah. uh, you know, three run legs and two sw- longer swim legs. If they're already running fastest, faster than us or are already swimming faster than us, right. it's going to be really hard to eat to get that time You back. know, and I honestly think that that was one of the, probably the highlight of our communication as a team in any event where we were just like, Hey, let's just make some real practical decisions about what's happening here. We're having a great race. Mm -hmm. We're in a position that we're not used to being in, um, you know, in a swim run. Like, yeah, it's not like we went into this year thinking we're going to be podiuming anything. Um, 
you know, and we're just racing who who showed up essentially, and yeah, and we're having and we're having year. a good day. We're having a good day. We're having a good day. So we're like, so I think we were both like, all right, you know, we've sort of consolidated second place. Let's just let's just keep moving. Let's just keep doing our thing and just kind of block out all this stuff. Yeah. So I mean, we I didn't say it felt like we took a gear off or anything like that. We we still kept pressing with with what we had. So off that three point three mile. Uh, run four um that led into the swim four which is a little 536 uh swim which probably ended up being um yeah what, what's also, that swim four? also also known as uh chris's swim chris's swim two years in a row this, i made this swim my like my baby this, yeah. this was my swim and this actually <laughs> is the swim that we did the day before at the yeah. shakeout. So it was a nice little, oh, yeah, you kind of peek around and you get that cove and you kind of I actually thought it was right really across. helpful because when we it were was. doing it at the exit, like, I knew exactly knew where exactly to go and we just the, kind of went right up. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was good. Yeah, that's some again, it wasn't anything technical about it. Some cool volunteers hanging out, offering to help people get up. That was great. Um, we saw Mark, um, our, photo- our personal photographer. <laughs> just kidding. He's and photographer. recent last guest on uh, yeah. the, the guest right before this. Uh, we're like, hi, Mark. <laughs> it's like, how you doing, buddy? It's like, hey, guys. Um, yeah, he, he, he uh, nice good, of him to take a bunch form. of photos. Good form, um, good form. That led into into run five, which, again, you know, was half a mile. That led to the cliff jump. At that point, we were deciding whether we were going to do the cliff jump. During run five. Dur- yeah, <laughs> during run five. We're like, well, should we do it or not? It's like, well, we did it a bunch yesterday. And, frankly, if we're really thinking we're going to consolidate second place, we should just race for that yeah. and not let anyone catch us. Again, not really thinking that, like, feeling sort of the feeling like that we need to hunt people down or anything like that it was just like hey we're moving well let's just keep moving well let's just make this as expedient as possible um so we skipped the cliff jump again but yeah. yeah but we got a couple on film earlier and all i could think about the cliff jump was like oh my gosh if we did this and then we somehow had to like charge back to get what like we gave up a place and then mm-hmm. we're like redlining for the red i'm like oh my god let's just let's just <laughs> run and just jump right in so but the the entrance into that swim uh, super five was super slippery. That was like a tailbone breaker. It was, yeah. I'm I I'm surprised that I didn't go down, but I stepped on it and I without moving, I just started sliding forward. I'm like, be this ready is, to go when you step on this yeah, rock. Yeah, that was a another another very quotable chipper moment. I think I think the quote was, "Hey, when you step on this thing, you got to be ready to go." <laughs> I'm like noted. Pull buoy in. Yeah, be ready. <laughs> Um, and that swim, so our, that swim was when we started hitting sort of the tail end of the short course, short course people, which again, you know, the short course started only ended up being only 15 minutes instead of an hour mm-hmm. after the long course folks. And I actually think that worked out well because one of the things that we were worried about was having to pass a bunch of people on that big, on that long single track that basically runs six. Super which is about windy, the windy. Super windy. I mean, when we did that last year, it was a lot of like on your left type situation. Yeah. Um, and this time, because they started like just a lot, a lot like the meat of the short course field. The majority of the field was out already of that been gone area. Yeah. So, so for us, it was what, maybe if you were, you know, Adrian and the folks at front, maybe they're hitting more of that sort of log jam. But, but for us, it was still pretty smooth. We saw a bunch of folks, but we were saying hi and chatting with them and just, you know, everyone was super great. We got a couple shout outs on that part, which was really cool. Um, yeah. So, run six, also very notably, I didn't miss the turn this time. Yes. I, I mean that was we I had a couple we had a couple <laughs> we had a couple like weekend long standing jokes. One, hey Chipper, are you drinking water? <laughs> or you got your, your precision hydration and then two, anytime we Don't would drive into the thing, I'm like, Chris, this is where we turn left. <laughs> so there was just a couple things that we weren't gonna forget. Um and yeah, it was great. And I, I will say the course was impeccably marked. Oh yeah. I had there was not one issue. I think maybe there was one time we even said, Oh, when's the last time you saw? It? And it's like, oh, there's a flag mm-hmm, before mm-hmm. you finish the sentence kind of thing. Um, and that led us when we were approaching swim six, we went down right by uh kind of where the finish line is, and you 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 come down and there was another aid station sort and we said, the last hey, aid station. Let's just pop a, a gel in for good measure. Let's hit some precision hydration because we know we got one swim and one run left. Let's get her done. And when we approached there, the lady said, the first place team is three minutes ahead of you. So that was interesting. But, 
unfortunately, Chris and I aren't D1 swimmers, so we can't call upon some greater yeah. swimming ability to motor us. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, it, so we found out after the race that that team was kind of hurting on that run before that swim. So maybe if we would have had that intel, maybe we could have pressed and cut that down to two minutes or one minute. But again, yeah, that wasn't what we were thinking. That wasn't. That's not. That wasn't our goal. For yeah, the race. it was like it's like, hey, look at us. We've somehow have found ourselves in this position. Let's just like not screw this up. You yeah. know, let's not let's not try to reach higher than than where we are. Um, so that last swim was definitely the longest swim of the day yeah last year was short by a lot this year i don't think it was I short think they did something to make it longer like they took you down like I one more cove i think or something. they did an extra cove because i was cutting this one pretty tight too so tight that i actually ran into a rock <laughs> and i i like stopped and chris was like what i'm like i hit a rock and i had to like go around I'm like you okay yeah like, rock and then uh yeah so we got out there and Again, I do like the last runs. I appreciate it not being some crazy sprint finish situation. We we kind of I wouldn't say we were looking over our shoulder for the whole thing, but definitely on that one, I'm like, I definitely peeked I, back once. Yeah, but it was I want to I like, want to take nobody. a look to make sure I'm not going to have to go zone five for a mile and a half here to try to fend off some some other uh, mm-hmm. team who wants to nip the low tie boys in the last uh, <laughs> on the last run like. Um, but yeah, we had a nice. I, I would say the 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 last run, we got. A, I I feel like we enjoyed it. Yeah, it was very it was celebratory. Good, yeah. It was like I mean, it was a culmination of a lot of things. It was obviously the end of our race season because with Catalina being postponed, it was I think exercising some demons from orcas. At least speaking for myself, um, and it was like. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it's such a fun course. So mm-hmm. it was it was great to be like, hey, man, we did it again, and it was super fun, you know? So there was, it was just a lot of emotions going on. And, and yeah, we crossed the line, second place overall long course team and second place men's team. Um, there was 84 teams registered. I don't know how many uh, sort of DNS or DNF'd. Um, our finishing time was two hours, 56 minutes, and 43 seconds, which, you know, I think... One thing for me that was very that was sort of weird crossing the finish line was not having the Boston Wet Sox, the Zaddies, or the Monks kind of waiting for us to say hi. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so there was definitely yeah, I wouldn't say that that uh, a lot of the usual heavy hitters were were there. So so I think a better measure chipper of uh, like our performance as a team was comparing it to last year, which we can actually do that. So yeah, so so I think that helps sort of calibrate the results. Um, of sort of like our development as a team last year's race we finished it in three hours 30 minutes and 16 seconds so this year's time was 33 minutes and 33 seconds faster i think another comparison is was our overall pace um for this year our pace our overall pace swimming and running all combined was 10 10 minutes and 38 minutes uh, 10 minutes and 38 seconds per mile which that's a pretty good measure. Usually, if you're like ten minutes or under, you're 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 the Boston Wet Sox, yeah. basically. Um, and last year, our overall pace was twelve minutes and twenty one seconds. So this year, we were basically a minute and forty three seconds per mile faster. Yeah, and so the way that Chris and I do our Garmin watches, we both have the Phoenix Five. Chris runs it just on run mode or swim run mode? mode, run mode, and it's just going the whole time. And I have it in swim run mode, so I'm able to do the lap so i know swim this and that so i actually have leg by leg comparison for the run and there's a couple that i just wanted to point out that kind of showcases this and i think this is the thing that i took away from last year's race report was we were so one we felt that we that was our best fastest performance to date as a swim run team we felt Mm -hmm. really proud and i'm still proud of how we did um but at the end of that, we're like, okay, we figure like we got the swim run technique down, the transitions, and we feel like we're getting a little bit more sophisticated with the strategy and things like that. And I specifically even remember saying, all we have to do is just swim faster and run faster. <laughs> and literally a year later, that's yeah. exactly what we did. After yeah. that, in 2020 in Austin, Chris was on the Tower 26 swim program. I shortly joined maybe like a month or two after and then we did that for a couple months, and then we got a coach. And, I mean, we've been putting a lot of fucking work in yeah. running and swimming and on the bike yeah. and, and other I, stuff yeah, I mean, to, it, to get these gains. Totally, but, totally. Um, so 
on the on the long run on the three mile, thirty three, thir- yeah, three point three mile run, in twenty twenty we did that run in thirty two minutes and thirteen seconds, mm-hmm. which is a ten minute twenty three second per mile pace. This year we did it in twenty six minutes thirty six seconds, which is an eight minute thirty nine second pace. So we dropped fifty two seconds per minute. Per mile, per mile off that. That's uh, yeah, you know, and I and I I'm, will say I'm pretty proud of that. I mean, I, I, you know, again, this isn't some sort of crazy humble brag. We, we've been doing a lot of training, right? But it's like I didn't feel like we were redlining at any point. Um, so so yeah, I mean, I, I would say, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm super happy. I don't think any of us predicted we were going to podium. Um, yeah. You know, I think I think we we went there to try to have a good race, and and yeah, I mean to to come out second, I think it was a big surprise for us, and and we were obviously super stoked <laughs> when we yeah, crossed totally. the finish line. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think last year we actually gave each other a pull buoy ra- rating for how we thought the race went. Oh. Um, and I don't know if you remember, Chipper, you gave this race performance last year a four point five pull buoys. <laughs> so. I mean, I think you started off a little hot on that wow. one. <laughs> I'll give this one a 4.5 as well. Okay. All right. Yeah. I think last year, I I remember being like, I feel like we kind of have cracked the swim run code part and the running fast, I which is what I didn't, was unknown for me. The swimming faster, the running faster, I kind of know how to do that. You just mm-hmm. do more. You get someone that knows what they're doing, which is we got a coach that they know what they're doing and that's how you get faster at those two things. The swim run, the technique, that was like work unknown stuff to me. And I felt like we really clicked last year at this race. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I probably assessed it such a Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. And, and that's when we use we kept a tether on for the whole time. Yeah, that was the first um, yeah. You know, I, I I did something new on race day. I use clear goggles because whenever the Dirksen speak, I try to listen. So Greg, you if you're listening, I got clear goggles because you said i should <laughs> so i did and i actually checked because of the goggle <laughs> suggestion i just i was like i don't even i couldn't tell you what tent or shade my goggles were they are blue but they are mirrored oh, okay. i gotta look cool yeah for, you, you, for you Mark did. taking you, photos you, you definitely you <laughs> definitely look look cool um yeah so post race you know we're hanging out at the finish line saying hi to folks our friends the concho boys john and addison um, they came in about 30 minutes behind us, but that was good enough for third place we were so in their stoked. second swim run. That so was awesome. Third place men's team. So <laughs> super stoked for them. I think, uh, you know, they signed up. They were going to do Catalina. And with that getting canceled, it wasn't a, it wasn't much of a arm twisting activity to convince them to come down to Austin. Yeah, they so were they were pretty still riding high from from odyssey orcas which yeah how can you not be yeah i mean you know overall impressions i still think this is an amazing race i still think this is a great race for beginners or people who want to dip their toe in swim run i mean it's you know it's it's not it's not that it's easy because anytime you have you know 4k of swimming there's just nothing yeah. easy about that but i think in terms of like you know the stuff that could scare you, like crossing, like the Portland Sound, or, or ocean swims, or, or sharks climbing, or anything you know, like two thousand feet, you know, in a wetsuit. I, I think those things are, are sort of mitigated by this course, and it's still it's, it's still as hard as you can make it. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And everyone we spoke to was super stoked. And whether you're short course, long course, solo team, whatever, um, it seemed like everyone had a great time. I didn't. I didn't get any bad vibes from anybody. I mean, it was just a good time. And they changed the finish line venue to be in uh, the little sort of community t- dining hall thing that they mm-hmm. have. And Lars's mom, Lois, had literally is cooking enough for an army, pulled pork sandwiches there for the vegans and vegetarians. There was a mountain there of options. There was options. <laughs> yeah, there was options that wasn't like, oh, it's oh, you can eat a salad. Uh, like veggie wraps with hummus and, and fresh veggies in there, coolers full of cokes and waters. At the athletic brewing was there. I mean, it was just a good time, and it, it felt more um, like the community. The whole weekend was just mm-hmm. community, mm-hmm. community, and that's the thing that we keep coming back to is how awesome it is. Yeah, and, awesome and, and you could feel it grow. I feel like this race 
again, because some of the usual players that we've been used to seeing at every race we've done, like whether it's the Adorka Bulls or the Zaddies or the, you know, the Monks or whoever, um, California Swim Run, um, you know, a lot of them weren't there, but mm-hmm. it was still the same. It was still the same vibe. It was yeah. just, we just made new friends instead of, you know, kind of catching up with old friends. And, and it was, yeah, I mean, it's just great. It's just great. I think, you know, there's a lot of people that we really need to thank, I think, for for us having a successful season and for, you know, yeah. all the progress we've made. Obviously, um, have to thank our wives and to lesser extent our yeah. kids <laughs> for supporting us. I will thank the kids for taking it easy on mom. Yeah, exactly. That's, and I uh, hope they like the armadillo. Yeah. I brought out some armadillo stuffies back. But, yeah, obviously the wives, I mean – you know, yeah, we're getting up butt ass early every when we can to try to like, you know, we try to inf- inflict enough suffering on ourselves. <laughs> it's a lot of <laughs> to, martyrdom to, to make lo- it happen. Yeah, to like do the early morning workouts, but you know, the wives are are always there when we're uh, blasted and and tired after a, a big thing, and we can't we can't pick yep. it up. They're they're always there supporting. So obviously can't sure. can't do it without them. Um, obviously huge thanks to our coach this mm-hmm. year who who really i mean i haven't been in this good a shape in yeah i, I mean don't know when we we've been we've been ready for for every race and i think that's definitely a testament to to you know to, to good coaching uh they prefer to re- remain nameless so we won't name them but you know thank you yeah <laughs> from the bottom of our heart um annie and brooke from the swim run labs i mean they're our friends they're at this point they're like our swim run soulmates they are um and you know their support and encouragement has been really helpful you know they're the first people that we texted when we told them that they'll be podiumed yep. after our wives um and uh yeah obviously odyssey swim run for their support all year hosting amazing events but also being really supportive of us and what we're trying to do um you yeah, know it's... it just goes a long way to 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 helping us achieve what we want to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like partnering with them this year was really cool and it just made so much sense. Uh, totally. You know, we, re- we really hope to, to continue that in the future. Um, also need to give a huge shout out to Frederic of Frank Paddle. He mm-hmm. was generous enough to supply Chris and I with Frank Paddles for the season's racing, which was so cool of him. Definitely did not need to do that. But uh, I will admit that I did lose one of my Frank paddles on one of my cliff jumps. Luckily, they float. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I'm like, where is it? And people are like, it's behind you. I'm like, it's okay. It's just a well, like $100 you, well, you, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's funny about that. Like, you were just holding them like they were a little football when you jumped. And I was like, I don't. What's he really? doing? Really? Really holding them like that? Uh, just like if you're just running with them or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, so, so you jumped in, you start looking around. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and then someone's like, it's right there. I was like, oh sweet. yeah. I'm glad it was Stats floating. Uh, but again, Frederick, thanks for that. Uh, and that rolls into the rest of the gear. So Helen, Christopher, Dennis, Daniel, at the Ark. Yeah, Swim Arc run, is awesome. Obviously. They've been, I mean, they've been the first brand that ever, you know, even gave us the time of day. So, you know, we love wearing their stuff, and it's, yeah, it's uh, it definitely we both worked. were rocking the the Vigs mm-hmm. with the kangaroo tops, kangaroo tops, and Keel style. pluses, Keel plus. And yeah, it was great. It yeah. was great. Obviously, we also have to shank. Do you have to shank? We're, We're not, not shanking, shanking anybody. anybody. Uh, Are we, we also- making shanks after this? <laughs> Carbon fiber ones. Yeah. Uh, we have to thank all of our show guests because I mean we've gained so much wisdom from them. Yes, we. It's a set, it's almost like a hack, right? Where we can just ask people all these who have all this experience, all these questions, and then oh, we just like absorbed absorbed that energy. And I think finally, we definitely need to thank all our listeners for their questions, their Absolutely. encouragement. It really fuels us when we hear that they listen to their show, and as we mentioned before, that they actually that they felt ready for race day and had a positive experience. Um, for us, that's like totally validates, you know, all the time that we kind of put into this uh, labor of love. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm i still, and Chris and I talk about this constantly. This, we're, we're closing out our second year of this podcast. Yeah. And whenever people come up to us and say that they listen or they hear every episode or they recognize, it's still such a, a foreign situation for me to like wrap my hand head around. It's, it's, I guess it's super humbling. And um, then we have to obviously thank all of our Patreon supporters this year. Definitely. Uh, we have some really solid folks on there that are helping us keep the lights on. 
um, you know, helped pay for like website hosting and podcast hosting and mm-hmm. our sticker addiction and all sorts of stuff. So we couldn't do it without you. So thanks, thanks for that and supporting us um, for a month or two, wow. 18 two months, years, two years yeah. on Patreon. So that's yeah. just so awesome. We're going to um, and a little step spoiler our, alert. Step our game up next year on the Patreon. Spoiler department. alert. Everyone who's a Patreon <gasps> is getting a special a special holiday gift from the Low Tide Boys. So stay I'm, tuned for I'm that. I'm signing up right now. Yeah, maybe you should. Okay. Maybe you should. I will. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it, it was actually kind of funny because when we met Orla, she was basically staying a couple doors down from us. And this is this is just a great example of the sermon community. She's apparently addicted to coffee, as is a lot of Same. people. So she uh, basically went to Target and bought a coffee maker and was making coffee for everyone on race morning who felt like they needed it to live. <laughs> warm coffee. Warm coffee. Was her, good. Was her good, good warm coffee. So, specific. so, but when we met her, she was going to the shakeout. So we were like, hey, just jump into our car with us. And she got to see a little bit of sort of the behind the scenes of people coming up to us and thanking us. And we're just like, oh, geez, <laughs> like, gee whiz. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was great to chat with her. And I think, um, you know, she, anyway, it was, it was just really funny. Like usually we're sort of in our own cocoon of embarrassment when people yes. thank us and acknowledge us. And now we had people who we were had just kind of like watching it. Same thing with the Concho boys. I think, you know, they were just kind of mm-hmm. rolling their eyes at us and letting us have sort of our low tide boys time. But um, yeah, but it was really great. We love this race. We love Odyssey. I think final thoughts on the race. I think we had our best race to date. Um, close second, I would put Casco. I think coming in tenth place men's team at Casco in a really competitive field. I think that yeah. was definitely like a solid performance for us. Podiuming here was amazing. Orcas, hey, fourth place on an incredibly challenging day where you yeah. were where you were like in the well for four plus hours and still made it out the other side. I mean, I think every performance this year notable. Notable you know, a feather in her cap, an arrow in her quiver. And I mean, uh, if, if possible, I would love to keep coming back to do Austin because it's so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. So where will you find the low tie boys in 2022? Dun, 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 dun. It's a good question. Is that a cliffhanger? Do we, do we, Is it a do we tell people? Well, I think, I we're think doing we, know, Catalina. we know two things. We know we're doing Catalina and we know that we want to do Lake James. So those are two that are, that are set up. I mean, we, we can talk about it in our, um, we talk fireside about it next chat. month in the fire ch- in our fireside chat about what we're what our hopes and dreams are for for for, for 2022. Um, we can say now we'd like to qualify for the world championship under ranking points. We don't know if we're going to have enough. If we we're do, we're going to apply though. We're going to apply. If we do, fantastic. If we don't, hey, we'll just uh, keep keep plugging away at we'll, it. So we'll we'll start racking points again. Yeah, that's it. But it was a great season, Chipper. Always a pleasure to share the field of battle and. You know, I can't oh, we still did other. our uh, fly out after the race deal. What? We've, well, we jetted oh, off oh, yeah. to, to fly oh, home. That we was got home at like <laughs> midnight. Maybe we need to rethink that because I'm dragging oh, to that. Yeah, that, that was bad. That was dragging. bad. But uh, yeah, we had vegan food. That was good. Was it? Yeah. I loved it. I'm glad. Okay. You like the milkshake? The milkshake was good. I think there, was, all the boys I think the there was milk in it, though. I think Damn right. I don't think it was, it was vegan. Yours. That would be quite the quite the uh, smoke and mirror situation. <laughs> Fronting as a vegan. <laughs> <like milkshake>. <laughs> <laughs> Some weird saboteur. Saboteur? Probably the same one at uh, Orcas. Saboteur, yeah. Yeah, so that's our race. We loved it. We had a great time. We had a great result. We're super happy and proud of it. Mm-hmm. We're so glad we got to meet so many new people, got to see so many old friends, and just continue on our swim run journey. That was great. Peace and love. Yeah! Thank you for listening to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and leave a review on iTunes if you're so inclined. You can also sign up for a newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, drop us an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance 
of our swim run activities, hobbies, and other bullshit we do. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then run to the finish line. And just keep going until you're done. <laughs> <laughs>